This is James Corbett of The Corbett Report with your Sunday update from the Center for Research on Globalization at globalresearch.ca. And now for the real news. New unconfirmed reports out late last week suggest that the U.S. is preparing to deploy ground forces to Libya this fall in direct contradiction to all public assurances that the conflict was merely a kinetic military action and would not involve boots on the ground. The reports, citing military sources at Fort Hood, indicate that additional special forces will be sent to the region in July, with the 1st Cavalry Division and three corps to be deployed in the country in October or November. In total, nearly 30,000 troops are said to be preparing for this, uh, this escalation. These reports are further bolstered by recently released videos showing what appears to be NATO military advisors directly interfacing with rebel forces on the front lines of the ground conflict. Now, a legal battle is shaping up on Capitol Hill between the White House and a bipartisan group of congressmen and senators who are for formally challenging the legality of Obama's use of the military in the region long after the expiry of the 60-day War Powers Act limit for the president to wage a military operation without congressional approval. We're here today to announce the filing uh, in federal court of a lawsuit that cha challenges the constitutionality of the war against Libya. The Constitution of the United States, Article 1, Section 8, makes it abundantly clear that no president can go to war unilaterally without the permission of the Congress. Uh, this lawsuit also is challenging a policy that permits the president to uh, commit the United States to a war under the authority of NATO. Uh, similarly, we're challenging policies that would allow the United States to be committed to war uh, under the authority of the United Nations. This is a clear and absolute illegal war. It has been from the beginning, as quite frankly, uh, wars have been in the past, but we're dealing with this one now. We have to deal with this now. We have to assert our powers. And if we don't, if we don't step forward now, if the courts don't assist us now, if our colleagues don't assist us now, eff effectively they said, you are a neutered branch of government with no powers in this arena, and that cannot happen. Remarkably, the Obama White House issued a breathtaking defense of its own illegal position last week, continuing to use the argument that the bombardment of the civilian population in Libya does not, in fact, constitute hostilities, as set out in the War Powers Act. This denial comes even as fresh reports surfaced last week that Tripoli's Nasser University was bombed as part of the NATO campaign, with numerous university staff injured and killed. The Center for Research on Globalization published exclusive photographs of the bombing on globalresearch.ca earlier last week. The photographs were supplied by Mohammed Al Alam, one of the students at the university, and include graphic photos of the civilian deaths in the bombing. The United States is not the only administration increasingly under fire for its participation in the NATO campaign. In an article late last week, Professor Michel Chazadovsky of the University of Ottawa details how the Canadian Parliament passed a resolution in favour of extending Canada's participation in the campaign. Despite a recent election sending numerous members of the far-left and nominally anti-war New, Demo New Democrats into the position of the official opposition in Parliament, the only person to vote against the resolution was Elizabeth May, the leader of the Green Party. For more on the preparations for ground war in Libya and their significance, I turn to Professor Chosodowski, director of the Center for Research on Globalization. Well, the, the preparation for this ground war have been ongoing for, for several weeks now. Uh, I think what is uh, quite revealing is the fact that the USS uh, George H. W. Bush, which is named after Bush Sr., which is the largest naval vessel in the world, it's an aircraft carrier, which has just come out uh, and it's on its maiden voyage. Uh, it's now in the Mediterranean. Uh, it's deployed uh, for use in the, the Libyan campaign. It has on board more than 5,000 uh, forces, marines, uh, sailors, uh, special forces and so on, uh, helicopters, aircraft, it is accompanied with a major strike group uh, and uh, this massive deployment uh, is intended to support a ground war uh, uh, with the possible landing of NATO commandos, US and NATO commandos on Libyan soil. 
And then we're in, an, in, very in, in an entirely different uh, context, uh, because then it becomes a war of, of invasion and, and possibly occupation. But ultimately, what's going to, I think what's going to happen, particularly in Western Europe, is that the legitimacy of some of the heads of state and heads of government will start to, to collapse uh, when they are confronted with the, with the outright uh, consequences of, of their actions, uh, of their humanitarian actions, and people start to, to, to understand that this is a war, uh, it's a war which is in derogation of international war, it's a criminal undertaking, and it is killing thousands of people. The corporate media has come under heavy fire from watchdog organizations and international observers who have concluded that reporters are purposefully hiding the extent of the atrocities being committed by the Western-backed rebel forces, even as dubious reports about Gaddafi's atrocities, including tales that Libyan soldiers were given Viagra to help fuel rape sessions on the Libyan population, have been reported unquestioningly. A new team of independent media and observers are heading to the region to report on the extent of the NATO bombardment and the civilian casualties that have resulted from the conflict. Joining us last week to talk about the media manipulations of the conflict was one member of that contingent, Global Research Associate, Madi Nazem Roya. The reporting has been part of the war campaign coming out of Libya. Uh, we have all these uh, mainstream uh, media uh, reporters, journalists there. Uh, they're not saying anything about the civilian casualties. Uh, yet they were they were the ones who were pointing out any death or claiming to point out any death during uh, the the starting of the uh, so-called re rebellion in Libya. But now, when it comes to civilian casualties, it's it's all quiet uh, from them. It's silence. They don't say anything about it. The media here has been telling absurd stories about uh, Gaddafi uh, giving Viagra to his soldiers and ordering them to be involved in rape and uh, they've they lied from the beginning about the uh, the jets attacking civilians uh, all types of lies the same types of lies we saw in Iraq when they talked about a million uh, troops about to invade Saudi Arabia uh, about Iraqi soldiers killing uh, Iraqi babies throwing them out of incubators which has been proven to be a lie uh, this is the type of, type of propaganda that's being used against against Libya. Now, 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 I'm not saying that there isn't anger in Libya and there isn't uh, internal, um, internal uh, tensions. There definitely is. Uh, uh, the Libyan government's not a role model government, but uh, the, the facts are that what's happening in Libya is being, uh, it's being uh, manipulated for other interests. There's other motives behind this. This is not a humanitarian war. It's very clear to any uh, any intelligent, rational cr person who uses critical thinking that this is not a war. <laughs> this is an aggressive uh, war against Libya. It's a war of aggression, which is offensive. They just bombed a university the other, a couple of days ago, and uh, they've been bombing hospitals, libraries, uh, places that have nothing to do with the combat. As escalation in Libya becomes more likely, Alternative media voices become more important in providing a counterbalance to officially sanctioned propaganda for the war effort. One of those voices, Pepe Escobar of the Asia Times, talked to the Corbett Report last Thursday about the specter of a ground war and the importance of an independent media in propagating real news about the Libyan operation. Well, uh, we all know that they said from the beginning, in, in fact, the resolution is explicit, no boots on the ground. For that, they would need, theoretically, a new resolution, which China and Russia already said on the record that they will veto. So I'm sure they're going to find some kind of scheme, uh, a real mafia-style scheme, obviously, to have boots on the ground. In fact, some of these boots are already on the ground. CIA operatives, British SAS, French intelligence operatives, people who are training the so-called rebels. And of course, they, they, NATO in, in Brussels basically thinks, okay, if we bomb the hell out of uh, Gaddafi's compound in Tripoli, sooner or later, 
he's going to disappear or he's going to smash all his infrastructure. He won't be able to conduct his military anymore. But uh, they haven't done that for the past two and a half, three months. You know? So this could go on for another six months. And the longer it goes, Gaddafi could, in fact, do what Saddam Hussein couldn't do at the time in, in 2003. He could resist for a long, long time, and even if he's deposed, he could conduct a guerrilla war, because don't forget that large swathes of the Libyan population are pro Gaddafi as well. So this is not a question of a 90% of the population against a dictator. Things are much more complex in Libya, but obviously you don't get this story if you follow Western mainstream media. For more on this story and other breaking news and current events, please go to globalresearch.ca. For more research and analysis by James Corbett, please go to CorbettReport.com.